Good morning, everyone. Okay, let's get started. This was my country map by the time I was five. These were some of the countries that I'd been to. At five, I'd been to three different schools in three different countries in two different continents. By the time I'd finished my education, I'd actually attended 10 different schools. And it's not surprising that I like working in an industry that has change at its very core. Today I'm going to talk to you about digital transformation. It's a very hot topic in the media at the moment. And I want to explain a little bit more about what it actually means. We're going to talk about the modern workplace, tools that are available to you, and the changes that have taken place. I'd like to introduce you all to Dynamics 365, Business Central. And finally, we're going to deal with roadmaps, both Microsoft's and T-Visions. So why did we choose digital transformation as a topic? As you can see here, that when the IDC surveyed IT decision makers across the Europe, they all had this as a top priority for their businesses. So what is digital transformation? Okay. This is Microsoft's definition of digital transformation. And for me, the most important word here is reimagining Reimagining evokes words like remodel, remake, restart. It's a change in your business processes, which actually most of you have already done. It's that business use of technology. Digital transformation is not a single instance. It isn't one thing that just happens and changes your business. It's an ongoing process. It often involves moving your technology to the cloud and providing your workers with a more diverse uh, scope of technology in the business, all with the aim of improving your bottom line. There's no point in making change if it isn't going to improve the profits for your business. So here we have the, some of the benefits that digital transformation can bring for you. <coughs> customer experience is absolutely key to customer retention. Customer retention helps drive growth and it also allows you to get better lifetime value from your customers. Empowering your employees is, is vital. They now want the flexibility to be able to work anytime, anywhere, and any device. Optimizing your business is all about cost savings, automation. So many of you already have interfaces in place. Let's not double key anymore. Let's use web services to translate data. Let's take that even further and think about how we can basically use the new technologies, the emerging technologies that are coming out, the AIs, the bots, to help your businesses reduce their costs. These changes do actually transform your services. So if you think about um, how much more communication you have with your customers around delivery of services, how much more communication you have around what their favorite products are, um, how you're able to advertise to them about um, the way that they work with you. Um, it all adds an extra element of service to your business. But there's downsides to digital transformation. Data security is one of the biggest concerns of businesses today. And I don't know if any of you are aware, 
but there is now a new insurance policy on the market and businesses can now take out cyber insurances. It's very much an emerging market. The policies differ vastly and there's a very high profile case at the moment where Zurich Insurance was asked to pay out on some ransomware for a business. Unfortunately, that ransomware has been associated with Russia and Zur Zurich had a, um, a line in their insurance policy about uh, overseas states um, and so they're basically saying that they won't pay out on it. But it is a new insurance that businesses should be looking at and luckily that there is a new set of sort of brokers who specialise now in cyber insurance who can help take you through um, the different policies and how they're, they're, they're basically uh, the pluses and minuses, the pros and cons of the different policies. As well as that, those of you who are moving to Azure, you've obviously got the tool sets that are in the Azure set, one of which is Compliance Manager. Is anybody in the room using Compliance Manager? Okay, that looks like a no. Well, Compliance Manager is a great way of managing your DDPR issues. It's a great way of seeing who's accessing your data, how and when. And uh, I would urge those people who, who are not using it and who are storing their data in Azure to go and get your IT people to go and have a look at what benefits it could bring to you. Any time, any change in your business um, brings about barriers. Um, I actually think this slide should probably say barriers to fast change. So on legacy systems, the further away you are from the latest technology, the bigger the jump is, the harder it is for you to change, the more time and resource it's going to take for you to move on. Talent. There's definitely going to be a shortage of the market for some of the skill sets that people are going to be looking into. How many of us know people who have a job job title of data scientist, economics behavioralist, uh, and, and few of us even come across data security experts. I mean, it really is a new world requiring new skills and people are having to cross train into these new skills as fast as possible. If we go back to the word reimagining, that's a very creative word. And the people who do the reimagining of your business models in new technology are visionaries. And there are not that many visionaries to go around businesses. Okay? So there's a general skill shortage in that area. I'm not sure culture affects that many people in, in this room. Um, the businesses that uh, are our clients, we find we're ambitious. They're always looking to leverage business benefit from technology. Um, so they have a culture of change anyway. Last year, we had Steve Horton Burnett here giving us a really good talk about some of the um, issues with change management. And I just wanted to reflect on uh, three of the slides that, that he brought for us. Technology, choosing the, te the right technology, the right product is important, but it's just as important to get good change management going in your businesses. Okay? And this slide shows the emotions that people go through when they're undertaking significant change. Depression. Oh. Good change management is when you're able to adopt acceptance and progress really quickly. And it helps if people in your business are used to change. So this slide shows the difference between good change and how slow it can be to adopt and how slowly you get your returns on your investment. And well-managed change, which allows you to get going faster and move on to the next project, which is almost certainly around the corner. 
Within all our businesses, we have individuals who fit into different personality types. Uh, this is the Donald Tosky energy in the workplace model. And uh, it comes from data where he surveyed uh, thousands of businesses of different sizes from 10 people to 50,000 people. And he's looked at how their energy in the workplace affects change. So we have a group called the victims. 9% of your business 9% of your staff will love to moan to anybody about change, they won't want to adopt change, and it'll all be a problem for them. 38% of your business is spectators, okay? They're the crowd. They're not going to assist you. They might not set you back, but they're not going to assist you making that change. They're just going to follow the crowd. The most important set are those visionaries. The visionaries are the players. They're the ones who can reimagine your business with the new tech. Unfortunately, they only make up 14% of our business. And the last group are the most difficult to handle when you're undergoing change. They're the cynics or terrorists. And actually, they're the largest group. They represent 39% of our business. So, do we ignore this group of people? No, we don't. These are the people that we have to get on board the most. We have to do the most to talk them round, to be positive about the change, and to adapt to the change. And actually, some of these were players. They are people who maybe have seen failed projects or heard talk so many times that they've become disenchanted. And actually, they have high energy, and high energy individuals are great at bringing change about. So you definitely want to try and talk these people around and include them and not ignore them. So if digital transformation isn't a big bang, it's a small um, a succession of small changes, what you start off with is the light bulb the idea. You plan it with the stakeholders. The cogs that you can see up there is around what tools do you already have. And you'll be amazed at how many tools we do already have with some of the bundle packs that we get from Microsoft around Office 365, the additional facilities that are within um, uh, the Dynamics range. So there are, there are a lot of tools out there that we may already have that we're not embracing in the business. Uh, if we haven't got the right tools, we obviously need to finance it. As I said earlier, there's no point in having the idea to transform something if it's not actually going to either drive your income or increase your profit. So it's got to have some, some benefits for you. And then when that all change goes through and is successful, you need to remember how do you measure success? So when you're doing your planning, what are the KPIs that are going to show that this change brought benefit to your business? And how are you going to measure that? Once you've got the success, you get a moment in time to just enjoy. And then it's all start again with the next idea, the next technology. That's how quickly the marketplace is changing. So, changes in the modern workplace. It can be as simple as changes in dress code. It's absolutely changes in device, the work tools that we use. The very first company I worked for didn't have a computer system. And I was there when they put in their first computer system. They had paper. So the tools that we use are very much changed. And when it comes to devices, those devices might be the company's devices, which you've got control over, but equally they can be individuals' devices that you don't have control over. Okay. For those companies that still want a physical office, there's a change in office layout, furniture choices. Notice there are no drawers here for paperwork. 
Can you see what else is missing from those desks? No phones. Okay. So phone systems have been replaced by tools like Skype and headsets. Very few pens on the desk. And desks are not assigned to individuals anymore. Cafes now have retail space. Shops are where we go for a retail experience and then we buy everything online. And if you've got a quirky job, let's say you're a wildlife cameraman, you used to work with a tool like this and now you have to fly one of these. This is what most warehouses look like today. Good stacked in bins and shelves and people who go to those bins and shelves to collect those goods, to do the picking. But if you reimagine it, it could look so different. If I come back to what's happening in the office workspace and the change about how we work and collaborate with each other, Flexible working often means that our colleagues are not available in the office and are working from home. But we still have now all the communication tools that we need to be able to have meetings with them um, over the internet. Office 365 came along and helped it to make us easy to communicate across the world, any time, any device. Uh, and the cloud application brought us those communication tools. This is my suite of Office 365 apps. Are you all familiar? Is everybody in the room on Office 365? Hand, hands up if you're on Office 365. OK. Yeah. OK. So most of the room is. So this must look quite familiar to you. These are the apps that have come up on my um, desktop in the morning. And obviously, we've all been working with things like Mail and Excel and Word for years. But how many of us really use them all? How many of us use, for example, Planner? I love Planner. I discovered Planner about three months ago. And it's a great way of assigning tasks to your staff. It's brilliant. Um, of these tools, there are 22 up here. I use 11. OK, so I'm only using 50% of the functionality I have available to me. Brian is going to be talking in the next section about Power Apps, which is one of the tools that's up there. But I want to talk to you a little bit about Teams. Does anybody in the room use Teams? A couple, just a couple, right. So Teams is, has got all the functionality of Skype. It's got the ability to use messaging. It's got the ability to set up meetings, chat, um, but it has more than that. So it allows you to create um, channels, folders of information. So it could be around a project. Um, and what's interesting about it is that it's got fantastic search facilities. So it can search the audio on there. Okay? It can search video on there. So instead of just having meetings that take place and never recorded, you can actually record them and put them together in a pack, in a place, and use that. Now, Microsoft's roadmap is actually to replace Skype with Teams. So for those of you who are using Skype heavily in your business and you haven't already looked at Teams, it would be absolutely key for you to start using it um, and uh, uh, enjoying the benefits that it brings. So. Digital transformation definitely involves the cloud, and I just wanted to clarify the different types of cloud that are available. There are two types of cloud available, private cloud and public cloud. Private cloud is rather like having your own storage container in a giant warehouse. You choose what goes in there, and you choose um, who has access to it, um, what they can do. Um, you can add additional software into that private cloud. 
you can increase the size of the machines in there, you can put in a new virtual machine. So it's your space and you control it. It's not that dissimilar to when you had your technology on premise. The difference is you're benefiting from the cost savings that the cloud can bring for you. Public cloud is completely different, okay? Public cloud is where your data sits in a shared service. Whilst your, yourselves and whoever you want to give access to can access that data and use that service, you can't go into the SQL back end of it. You can't add additional software into that area. It is just a service where you're playing with your data and you're working with your data as a business. So a private cloud gives you great flexibility for your business and allows you some of the benefits or cost benefits of moving to a cloud architecture. And public cloud gives you fantastic cost benefits, so you can do it at a much lower cost, but it doesn't bring you the flexibility of you being able to choose. And now I'd like to introduce you to Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. When we set up T-Vision 20 years ago, Navision Financials was the name of the product. It was a true Windows product, proprietary database. The thing we loved about it was the fact that we could access the source code, solve our own bug issues. And then that evolved into Microsoft Dynamics Nav. It rebranded again with a slightly different logo. And Microsoft Business Central or Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central is the new branding of NAV. It is the next evolution of NAV, of NAV. For the first time ever, it's offered as software as a service, which is about public cloud. It has this new idea of extensions and apps links in with so many of the, of the Microsoft technologies like Flow and Power BI. It's got fantastic integration with Outlook. And it's the first steps onto cognitive reasoning and AI services. Just wanted to remind you about what the product's core capabilities are. Some of you might have inherited your NAV system it's not just a finance system. It's a true ERP where data can flow in a single application across your business. Ian will take you through in detail later what some of the new functionality is for the D365 product. When people talk about digital transformation, there's usually some talk about data in there. I'm sure many of you have heard that data is the new oil So Microsoft's way of dealing with this is to start generating a standardization across their product set. If you have a customer name in LinkedIn, why shouldn't it have exactly the same field properties as the customer name in your CRM system and the same field properties in your ERP system so that that data can be brought together very easily. It can be interfaced very easily. And so across the whole of Microsoft's product stack, they are trying to bring together a common data service where the fields are equivalent to each other so that data can flow. This gives you some idea on how Microsoft Dynamics Business Central uh, links into the whole stack. So at the top, we've got something called Microsoft App Source. So if you want to extend your Business Central solution, you can go out and actually choose an app that somebody has written that will download and go into your system. T-Vision can now produce apps and put them out on the App Store, not just for our customers, but for anybody in the world who's using Business Central. You can see there the tight integration with Office 365. The product now has Power BI embedded, Cortana Intelligence, 
We've certainly started using the cash, cash flow functionality. Um, some of you may be looking at the algorithms that sit behind your sales order replenishment processes. It all sits within Azure and benefits from the Azure technologies. And then something that I absolutely love in the product is flow. So for years, I've been asked for business workflow, and here it is. And the power of flow is that flow applications don't have to just be in Business Central. So you can now flow data from any of your different systems using flow. All of these products are working with a common data service, and Bryony will take you through Power Apps. So if the new Business Central comes in a new form of deployment, how does that look? OK, so you can have on-premise deployments. You can have private cloud deployments. And now you can have public cloud deployments. You can also replicate your data from an on-premise or private cloud to a public cloud. So there are lots of different ways of getting your data. This is a screenshot of the Microsoft App Store. I was really thrilled that T-Vision was the second NAV reseller in the country to get an app published. This is our personal data encryption. And there are some NAV resellers who haven't even moved into this latest technology. The main benefit to end users is that the new development landscape allows businesses like us to write code that sits on the outside of the Business Central product and hooks in. Those hooks allow Microsoft to update their technology very quickly without it affecting bespoke work that's been put on the side. So this new development environment is all about allowing your businesses to move your technology, your main core technology, up to latest version easily, quickly, with the least cost. I'll just talk a little bit about um, uh, AI and cognitive reasoning. So this was just a little draft email that I pulled up and put together. So Business Central um, can have, uh, has got such tight integration with uh, Outlook that if an e email comes into my inbox and says, I want to buy two tables, or can you send me a quote for two tables, the cognitive reasoning in Business Central will actually read this email, recognize that it's come from one of your contacts within Business Central. It will look at whether you've got any items in stock. It will search on Athens tables. Now, that's a very specific table. It'll be very easy for it to find out whether or not you've got any Athens tables in stock. But actually, the second one is it will go and look to see if it can find blue chairs. So it's using the cognitive reasoning. And from this, a user can press a button that says, create quote. And in Business Central, it will create the quote. It will suggest the sales lines on that quote with the quantities that it's read from the email. And it'll leave it in draft form ready for you to look at and send out to your customer. So that's how Business Central is starting the journey of AI with cognitive reasoning. Ian is going to show you more of that later. The new, um, the new product, Business Central, it has intelligent insight. So when I log in to the web client, it starts feeding me information about my business. It tells me some of my KPIs. And as a super user, not a developer, I can change what KPIs I want to be told about when I log into NAV. So Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central is the new NAV. 
And lastly, I'd just like to cover roadmaps. So Microsoft do business in over 100 countries, and those countries are not necessarily uh, politically stable. So they're very clear. The first thing that they're saying is that over Brexit, they are very much with the UK, in the UK, and will just worry about the things that they can control and affect and get on with their main core business and wait and see what happens when Brexit comes along in terms of what changes need to happen to the product. They're going to continue with uh, AI. When Sasha Nadal took over the business, he scrapped all research and development programs other than AI and turned the whole of the R&D department over to AI. So that is where he feels the future is coming. And obviously, then, when they discover more about AI, they'll be putting it into their base applications. Microsoft have also um, started exploring the ethics side of AI. They're very concerned that they're a technology business and um, the way that they think that they should move forward with AI is not necessarily how the rest of society um, thinks it's, it is a good idea. So they're trying to reach out to the community to find out um, how they should be developing this technology. One thing's for sure, they're doing releases of the Dynamics 365 product every six months. So we get a new version every six months. That's very quick. They're very open about what's coming down the line. This is from the Microsoft Docs environment where they'll tell you what's on the product's roadmap. And if I just drill down into just the functionality this is the list of functionality that's coming in the spring. So, what does that mean for T-Vision? Well, a new product means that we have to move our IP to the new product. We've moved Bevica onto Business Central. We continue to invest in the drinks industry. We've moved Agency Time onto Business Central. We continue to invest in the recruitment vertical. We're going to continue to specialize in D365 Business Central. Now, that might sound weird. Why are we going to continue? Well, one of the things that we could do is we could go out there and say, oh, let's hire some more people and let's become AI specialists and let's become CRM specialists and let's put in a department that's all to do with data security. Now, the management team have sat down and really thought about what our roadmap looks like, and we feel that we should specialise and continue to specialise in the product that we know and not dilute our skills across a whole load of emerging technologies. It's important that we know what those technologies are and how they can benefit our customers, but it's not usually us delivering them with them. We tend to work with partners in the Microsoft ecosystem who specialize in those things. So to sum up, this is how I think of Dynamics 365 Business Central. I think of it as a bridge. It's a landing place that you kind of need to get to before you can go forward if you want to be at the forefront of exploring cognitive reasoning, AI, data in the cloud. Business Central is your first step onto that world. Well, thank you very much, everybody.